Okay, now what they're actually talking about in the past, there were three or four or five different companies that basically came together to make a computer company, pretty much. There's the typewriting company, which I owned. Uh, I own the typewriting company and the printing companies and quite a few others. Like I said, uh, my printing companies go all the way back to basically um, to basically Japan and China. The old spindly wheels, you know, you can if you look at all the really really old printers, you'll notice my spindle wheel, my my curved spokes on all the different uh, all the printing machines that used to print newspaper, and used to also print money, and used to print just about everything coming from Hong Kong or China, and basically also Europe had the curved spoke wheels on them. You know, if you look at the wheels, they're curved and spoke. You know, you know the spokes are curved wheels, basically like this on a big circle. And those are the oldest, by the way. Uh, later on, later on, um, before that, before that, they did wood, um, wood curved spoke wheels, and I own those as well. And those aren't aren't around anymore, because those are they they're made they're curved wheel curved spokes made out of hardwood, and basically it just ran a belt, so it was fine basically. Or you could do the straight spokes like everybody else. But our mine always had the curved spokes, even it, even when they were made out of wood. So anyway, and we could also use, I could also use steam pressure to curve the spokes, to curve the wood into any shape I wanted. And provided it didn't get wet again, it would stay there. Anyway, and even then I think it would stay there anyway. Anyway though, so fast forward to the metal era, and and I still have my curved spokes, spoked wheels out of cast iron now. Anyway, out of cast iron. So anyway, um, basically what they're talking about the uh, the uh, in in those other videos about about Atari, where Atari started basically was basically TVs and computers put together did not work. No one wanted to. No one wanted their TVs with computers. They either wanted a TV or they wanted a computer. And they didn't really want either. They just wanted TVs. Well, because the cost was so much, basically. Um, and they really didn't do anything to, to the TV. You could type stuff on the screen. Ooh. Uh, technically, that becomes like the like the cable TV. There's a lot of stuff that's happening in 1920, 1930, basically. A lot of jostling around, a lot of people... You know, like there's what's it called, there's other people, and then there's basically me, Lucifer Star. Which is like a hand that's reaching through time and space and basically down. And basically, at some point in time, um, anyway, things got interesting at some point in time, basically. As pretty much people realized who I was. Um, and basically, like I say, um, anyway, though, yeah. And like I say, for the longest time, pretty much just to do something for me um, or on my behalf was like, uh, well, you know, you'd be famous, basically, pretty much. So anyway, though, um, yeah, I got a little ridiculous. But basically, uh, basically, a lot, you know, a lot of it, a lot of it with my companies or my money. I was, I was funding a whole bunch of people to mess around and play with stuff. Only thing was, they didn't tell anyone and they didn't post it uh, that that it was all grant money a lot of them a lot of them just turned around once they realized how much money was being made or maybe it's because of Zachary or Bill Gates who had nothing to do with nothing he had nothing to do with computers he had nothing to do with anything he just had something to do with the teletype room which was basically a keyboard and a tv hooked up to a supercomputer or a bigger computer basically a real computer um which basically like like I said the the uh the it was it was housed in a in a in a building sized room and not the you know it took up a whole floor of a of a school basically anyway but but I had a fair amount of computing power about as much as basically maybe a smartphone I don't know I mean it it had a fair amount of computing power really anyway though whatever it was a long time ago yeah it probably had about about as much computing power as a smartphone or maybe your average PlayStation basically it had a fair amount of computing power actually. Anyway, though, but it took up a whole building, pretty much. And uh, and they were pretty neat. They could do a lot of neat things, um, you know, pretty quickly, though. And it wouldn't wear out anytime soon, and you could overclock it and stuff like that. Anyway, though, whatever. Uh, but basically, uh, 
Well, computers have been around since since like 1200 or like 1300 or 1400. But nobody knew, or at least no one really cared. I mean, no one knew what to do with them. At least until I wanted my Dungeon Master to come out, and also my other online games and stuff like that, and they actually started making money. But then again, financial system, and basically people were starving back in the old days, and, the, and, and, and most towns didn't even have roads. So there were a few things we had to get done first, like better pavement, better concrete, and not be dying from the plague or some sort of contamination thing, which was basically caused by uh, cyanide. Like I said, there was so much cyanide being released into the atmosphere or, or being released down streams that it was poisoning whole towns, pretty much. And it was basically a nightmare, and a lot of people were, were trying to cover it up or say, no, 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 it's not a problem, it'll dilute in the ocean. Anyway, though, but it was a nightmare. And almost killed off a whole a whole Indian village, or did kill off half an Indian village as it was actually seeping into the well water, because eventually it's going to get there. It it it, it just uh, it takes time for for that to happen. So and some idiot was releasing their water into the um, into the what's it called into in, into the aquifer. Anyway, yeah, whatever it might be my fault or or might be something that that was related to me somehow, or one of my decisions. Um, but. I mean, it, well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what, what they'd be doing dumping concentrated cyanide into the water stream for, but it's just crazy. But then they, they, they dumped concentrated DDT into the ground in, in, uh, in, um, in what's it called? In, uh, in, uh, 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 what's that town? Um, Vietnam. They actually paid people to shoot the to shoot the containers and the people, basically, or something like that. And basically, it all leaked out into the ground. They said, oh, oh, it's cleaned up. Anyway, and then, of course, they were shooting the people that were taking the samples of the water or the, or the, or the dirt in the area, knowing that that, 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 was a, that, that the large amount of DDT had, had spilled into that area and been seep, seeping into the groundwater as well as the ocean and killing all kinds of plant life and also seeping into the... In, into the animals in the surrounding area as they're drinking the water. Anyway, it's all very complicated and basically is pretty much what Nixon and JFK and, and John, John McCain and Jimmy Carter and a whole bunch of other people were trying to cover up back in Vietnam era. Like, like, the, like, like the Chinese said at first, they're not trying to shoot us, they're trying to shoot the, the reporters and the scientists. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so I don't really know. I mean, like I said, you're going to have to ask China. Like, like they know about it. They they were around back then, and they were dealing with it. Um, and and Nixon and JFK and Jimmy Carter and all of them were trying to blame um, the 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 Chinese or the or the, or the communists for the for the release of the DDT, even though it was actually being released by the United States or U.S. people. Basically, they were paid to do cleanup work. Only instead of doing cleanup, they <laughs> it's cleaned up. Anyway, but we're talking about computers right now, and basically, well, I mean, uh, pretty much South American drug lords against basically a whole bunch of computer people and a whole bunch of stuff because, I mean, Bill Gates looked rich on paper, but in real life, he wasn't all that rich. And we have this whole online versus or, or, or by computer versus real world, basically, where these South American drug dealers and like, like I said, I've never loved a South American drug lord more than than in the past when, when the South American drug lords were like, oh, yeah, <laughs> come into my house. Anyway, and um, as Bill Gates was trying to do the, basically, uh, in the past, swatting, pretty much, by basically running fake news stories on all these people, pretty much. And you get, basically, a whole bunch of leaders or a whole bunch of people, basically, saying, well, that's on computers and by a newspaper. Bullets are a little bit more real world. So, anyway, and there was a time in the past when I did very much love drug dealers and drug lords and a whole bunch of other people that had guns because... Otherwise, Bill Gates would have just had his way with the world. Anyway, and a bunch of other people. Anyway, though, but, um, but basically, there's a bunch of stuff, and it's all on record. And, um, you know, it just became this big, huge nightmare that was basically computers and the computer wars. And like I say, go grab Bill Gates. He's still alive. Shoot some true serum into him. Get him drunk. Put him in in front of a lie detector, te uh, a lie detector, and he'll probably tell you everything he knows about the whole mess. I mean, he was he was part of it, so.